What is up, everybody? I'm Hunter. My name is Jeff. That's not Jeff, that's Chris. Today on Lost Socket Garage, we're gonna be talking about a truck driving pass. Your ears look sunburned. Your sunburned. What is up, everybody? I'm Hunter. <laughs> what is up, everybody? I'm Hunter. My name is Jeff. He's not Jeff, he's Chris. This is Lost Socket Garage. Today we're going to talk about the Dynacorn pre-welded assemblies and what you need to watch out for. For many, the 60s and 70s is viewed as the pinnacle in American automotive production, giving us some of the most iconic cars in history. The 80s, not so much. What the 80s did give us is two guys with a passion for bringing these classics back to life. Their goal is to educate, motivate, and most importantly, make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Mother. Welcome to Lost Socket Garage. All right. We are about to kick out. Well, we did kick them out. We didn't really kick them. Chris, who are you texting right now? I'm We're gonna kick these two beauties out tomorrow. They're done. Let's show you. So, a couple more conversions done. Chris, tell us about these cars. Uh, one was a very pain in the ass. The other one. Oh, that should be these cars. That name. should be their names instead of the Jolly Green and. Red. Wait, which one? Which one was? Jekyll, which one was Hyde? Was it? Hyde was the normal guy, wasn't it? Hyde was the normal guy. And Jekyll was this. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, Dr. Jekyll, because that's when he changed. Isn't it? Okay, this one was the asshole. This one was the not asshole. Yeah. Okay. So, really, though, these were completely different ends of the spectrum. Uh, this one we had to take just all the way apart. I'll insert a couple of pictures of what it looked like before. This was uh, not here. Full floor had to be taken out, so we did a full floor pan, uh, wheel wells. We did um, the kit, no, it's the firewall to floor pan patch. We did new torque boxes. This thing was haggard, man. Like, this thing is 85% new metal. 85% new metal in this, legitimately. Like, I really hated doing this car. But she turned out very nice. She's epoxy prime now. Kind of give you a quick once around here. Now on this one, Chris, why did we use this one Dynacorn pre-assembled side? Because it's all we had. Okay, so it's all we had, A, and B. And we thought it was gonna be a lot faster. We thought, this foreshadowing right there. Foreshadowing. We thought it was going to be faster. Was it faster? No. No, not at all. Okay, let's talk about that. Not even close. So, we had uh, some serious issues with our door gap. And we couldn't figure it out. So, well, I mean, there's no door on here now, but there was a door here. And our door gap, what was it? It was like a half inch, wasn't it? It was a half inch. This whole assembly was a half inch too far forward. So, it set us back hours and hours because we're scratching our head trying to figure out why our door gap was a half inch. So, we moved the door in and get our door gap right here and then we were left with a half inch gap. You could basically see straight through where you should be able just to see gasket. And that's with the gasket on, so we weren't just missing that. That was with the gasket on. All those people jumping in the comments right now, yeah. I know how to fix it, there was no gasket. No, there's definitely a gasket on it and we're still off. On this side, we used the Dynacord and pre-assembled um, side, and basically what we found out is they put it together with different measurements. So eventually, we ended up measuring this distance right here. So we measured from here to the edge of the torque box, and it was a quarter of an inch this way. So this gap was a quarter of an inch shorter than stock. So we measured it and quarter inch off the stock. And that was a measurement that was taken off of 
multiple vehicles. So we measured that same thing across like three or four vehicles. And uh, the Dynacorn pre-assembled was, a, like I said, a quarter of an inch off. So if you're getting the pre-assembled uh, Dynacorn sides, just make sure you measure them because what's going to have to happen is you're going to end up having to take this off and move it further back, and it's a whole thing. Uh, what else do we do on this car? Let, let me show you. There's a Look lining my, hole that you have to have. Look at my cow. I made that. The lining hole. Talk to us about holes, Chris. So this hole lines up with the top of the cow and this whole kick panel thing, cow extensions. That hole has to line up. You cannot have it off center because if you do, that's the first sign that you're off. You have to line them up and then you should be good. So there's that. And then let's talk about this one. This one, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, the nice Mr. one. Mr. Hyde? Is it Mr. Hyde? It's a nice one? Okay. I don't know. Leave in the comments who is Dr. Jekyll and who is Mr. Hyde. Hey, you watching the video. If you like it, like and subscribe. <laughs> this was the non asshole. This conversion literally took, what, three days? Uh, we had it tore down and clamped together within two. In two days, this was torn down and clamped back together. It took, to complete it, complete it, it was about a week. That was to have it seam sealed, interior bracket kit put in, all of it welded, grinded down, which is, which is moving. That's cruising, cruising. And I think part of the reason, A, was we had that frame jig that we built. You can check out a video above of uh, how we built the frame jig. And, and then, two, it's the best coupe we've seen until probably, well, it might be even better than the red one in my garage. Yeah, this coupe it is. Might be a little better. We almost felt bad about taking this bad boy apart because it was just, I mean, we didn't do any of this. This is, none of us touched this. This was all redone. Um, the thing is, was just solid. So when we did the coupe to fastback, we actually did get to keep on the outer wheel wells, and I think that that helped out a lot as well. Um, First one. Yeah, first one we've been able to keep the outer wheel wells. Ronnie, I swear to God, Ron hides happy faces on cars, thinking that we're not going to find them. So this is that. Two cars getting out of here tomorrow. We got another fastback uh, on the way. Depending on when I edit this video, maybe we'll take a look at it. Maybe we won't. So let's take a look at some of our other projects. <laughs> All right, so we got a bunch of metal. So that's that's uh, that's actually good news. And um, the easiest way, because we actually have a storage unit, we can't keep all the metal in boxes. So we actually pre-weld the assemblies. And if you check out one of our other videos, it might be the same one I referred to earlier. I don't really remember. One of our other videos on putting together the... Stop covering up the pretty face. <laughs> was I doing this? Yes. Oh. <laughs> One of the videos we did, we covered uh, putting together the uh, side assemblies piece by piece. Well, we've been doing a lot of those. A lot of side assemblies. These rockers. So if you or anyone you know needs rockers. Or A pillars. Or, or A pillars. Cow patches. Or. A pillar, lower A pillar, upper A pillars, because the upper A pillar you can't actually get from the side assembly. Oh, cool. So we have a, just a ton of A pillars. Uh, we have rockers. We have, they're all for sale. We listed some of them on, on eBay, but hit us, hit us up on um, you know Facebook or Instagram and uh, DM us, and you know, we can ship these parts anywhere in the country, I assume. But these are the next, what, five conversions we're doing worth of side assemblies. Yeah. Ooh! I'm going to show you guys this tool. This was a fun tool. When doing plug welding, if you're doing a lot of plug welding, we got this from, where do we get this from? Harbor? Nope. Amazon? Matco. Matco. 
<laughs> this, <Harbor Freight. laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, this thing from Matco is freaking amazing. It just punches the holes for it. Uh, for your plug welding, and it also does. Should we demonstrate it? Yeah, let's let's demonstrate it. Oh. So if you use this side, it will actually check that out. Give you a cool offset edge. You can overlap metal. Then great for butt welding. Over, it saves you time from drilling holes. Oh, uh, love it so much. Saves so much in drill bits too. You guys get that if you're doing a lot of plug welding. Next, 71 Camaro. Woohoo! -hoo! We got it torn apart. We didn't tear everything apart. It was already kind of torn apart, but this baby is in here and getting a uh, new cowl, new fenders, uh, new quarter panels, new inner structure. This thing is getting a lot of work done. And I think we just got some parts for it. So I'm kind of excited to unpack those from from Dynacorn. Uh, let's talk about the real pretty one. Chris, where are we at on the real pretty one? Not done. Not done. The majority of the wiring's in, doing the fenders right now. We were going to see, take away the seam for the headlight buckets like we did back here and every other seam on the car. But after four times of it cracking, we said, screw this. The car's telling us it can't do that, so. Headlight buckets are actually going to have a seam, and that's the only seam we're going to have on this whole car. Yeah, still so look good though. yeah, the 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 quarter extensions. I mean, we so we Chris closed off this seam. Uh, there's a seam right here with the filler panel. Um, that yeah. seam's gone. That was filled in. Look at those body lines. Drip rails are gone. Damn girl, nice body lines, Chris. Uh, drip rails are gone. The doors. There's one dusty door right here, but that's shaved. So we really wanted to keep going with this shaved look. Whew, sorry about that. Got a little bit distracted. Customers came in. Yeah, so we're cleaning up the shop uh, because we have an open house this weekend. So as you can see, the shop's real clean. It's real nice. Ooh, we'll get back to that. Got Chris uh, scrubbing the floors right now because Ronnie's been gone for two weeks. Hey Chris, I think you missed the spot. Ah! No, don't go. Don't go. We good? We got you a nice shot here. We good? Yeah. We're okay. Okay. We're back. Look who decided to make an appearance. So we got our uh, coupe fastback conversion we've done. Uh, we might I think we did a, a video on these engine panels. Uh Mustang two front ends in it. Hey Chris, what are we looking at right now? That is a Gen three Coyote out of a 2018 Mustang, 460 foot pound. No, 460 horsepower. I don't know the foot pounds torque or torque foot pounds. I don't remember how you say it. Foot pounds. It's a badass motor, and it's a wide bitch. She's so wide, just like her. Whoa! That's why we have to delete the shock towers when you're throwing in a big old biatch like this. It does look good in there. All right, yeah, so that's uh, a little bit of an update here on what we're doing. Like I said, we have an open house uh, in a couple of days, July 30th. So if you're watching this and you're in the Utah area and you want to come hang out in <laughs> Utah area. Utah area. How about the Murray Salt Lake? <laughs> oh, we got people coming in from out of state, man. Well, Utah's a big place. If you want to come to our open house on July 30th from 11 to 3, um, follow us on Facebook. There's a little event thingy there. You can get all the details. Uh, check out our Facebook shop, uh, Instagram shop. We have all the socials. Every, every $5... <laughs> we even have social awkwardness. Social awkwardness. Um, oh, that's clever. That's a good one. I told you, I'm the funny one. Every $5 you spend, we'll get you an entry to win 500 bucks cash. We got to be doing that soon. Uh, until next time, drop your comments below. If you have questions, follow us on all the socials. Till next time. Stay classy. Bye.